similar to what a bhakta would also experience, not necessarily only a prapanna. So what then uh, distinguishes a prapanna from a bhakta when a lot of those qualities seem to overlap? That's a very good question. The question was, did everyone hear the question? Everyone heard the question? Okay. The question was, Sharanagati has six angas. It seems that even a bhakta would practice all those six and not just a prapanna. And therefore, what differentiates a bhakta from a prapanna? Is that the question? A bhakta also practices sharanagati. The difference in the case of a bhakta, the sharanagati is practiced. This is called, so when we say prapatti, there are two kinds of prapatti. Anga prapatti, angi prapatti. Anga prapatti is what a bhakta practices, which is a bhakta practices prapatti so that in order for his sins to be removed and therefore he becomes qualifies, he is qualified to practice bhakti. Sarvadharman parityajya mamekam sharanam raja ahamtva sarvapapebhyo moksha ishyami masuchaha. There, the prapatti there is. When you surrender to the Lord, all the sins that come in the way of practicing bhakti are eradicated by the Lord, which is called Anga Prapatti. Where the bhakta has done prapatti, but for him still the means is bhakti yoga. But he has to surrender. Prapatti is very much part of bhakti. Similarly, even a prapanna does bhakti. A prapanna does bhakti in order to experience the Lord. The prapanna does bhakti in order to experience and enjoy the kalyana gunas of the Lord. So therefore, in bhakti yoga there is prapatti. Then in prapatti there is bhakti. This is what we need to understand. So in bhakti yoga the prapatti is called anga prapatti. Prapatti by itself as a means is angi prapatti. And in bhakti yoga, of course, there is bhakti. Even for a prapanna, after he, he does sharanagati, what does he do? He has, to, he has to perform bhakti to enjoy and experience the Lord. Bhakti is all about being in awe of the Lord and constantly remembering Him with loving devotional service. So, therefore, bhakti is there in both the means, prapatti is there in both. But the only subtle difference is in the case of bhakti yoga, the bhakta still is making effort, his own effort, practicing bhakti yoga. In the case of prapanna, he is transferring all the responsibility to the Lord. That's the subtle difference. Uh, when you say moksha, it is not sayuja moksha. I mean, that is just make sure if you can elaborate to other people, to not confuse with the, the other kind of moksha. Our moksha is samyapatti moksha, where the, uh, the jivatma does not merge and become one with the Lord. <laughs> so upon reaching Vaikuntha, the, the jivatma acquires the eight kalyana gunas. But jivatma remains a jivatma. In cons, in cons, you know, in serve, you know, serving the Lord in blissful servitude, doing kankariyam to the Lord. He does, the jivatma does not become one with the Lord. That is, that is the samya moksha that our sampradaya recommends. When you said vira or virada, the, the virada, the Lord virada, take the form of viraja with her. Lord Arthur Raja. Arthur Raja the form of Viraja. That's a, what's your name? Kesha. Kesha. I think we should give a big hand to Kesha. Viraja is like a river which separates all this created world from Vaikuntha. It's like a border. You know, when you when you when you when you cross a country, you have a border post, right? You have immigration, you travel, right? You travel. You travel to Frankfurt in India. Excellent. You know what happens? 
when you when you when you when you when you have to enter there is immigration right the immigration officials there right you show a passport then they put a stamp and then they say you can enter right so viraja nadi is like that border immigration border right exactly the atma has to give its passport exactly and only if with a valid passport you can enter right so the atma has to be a prapanna who has surrendered or does has done bhakti so the lord is pleased and said you may enter so after crossing the atma then enters parama padarthi so okay then after crossing viraja it meets lord vardaraj right great thanks for asking this question again uh, i have a question uh, in our sampradaya people i mean generally they say you should not desire for more um, and so the youngsters sometimes you know they feel should be be very fatalistic should be not have ambition um, should be not aspire for uh, higher things um, you know can you throw some light on that desiring is a human privilege it's a privilege given by the lord to us so therefore desiring per se is not wrong but what is the direction given to a desire that is what becomes very important each of us all the children all of us we need to have expansive goals no doubt about that how do we kind of streamline these goals and how do we align it to the goal of all goals which that is what becomes important now first and foremost is to understand what is that goal of all goals what is the purpose of this life and when we recognize the true purpose of this life is to go back home to the lord the lord becomes the goal of all goals then every other goal that we set has to necessarily be aligned to that goal so there is no problem for me to become rich but then what would i do with that riches that's the question do i want to become rich for my own selfish needs or do i want to become rich and in the process share the created wealth and serve the lord and his creation then the gold takes a completely different color and shape so desiring goals are very important that drive the action but if we can align it to the ultimate goal of all goals then the direction is set right then there is no problem now you know i want i i, I want you know for a children out here you have to really think big becoming big no problem about that but why do you want to become big you want to become big so that you can serve others it's not about making money i want to make money to help those who don't have money it then then there is a meaning to say i want to make a billion dollars but i want to make the billion do- no, how many of us can make a billion dollars and walk away from the billion dollars now if we cannot walk away then we have a problem but if we can walk away then we are on the right path so having great goals making money you know the having wealth is no problem it only makes the journey a lot more you know easier for us so we are all blessed that we are here in a air conditioned room nice chairs nice atmosphere we are discussing with divine sixa a moment imagine the villages of india and imagine the plight of the people sitting there if such a session were to be organized now the moment we kind of look at that and say can i in any way contribute to uplift them then you know, it 
the goal that we have makes takes a completely different color and meaning so desiring having a goal is fantastic but he is aligned to the goal of all things come and have a question sure so is human world set up for failure i mean just looking at uh, you know how many people tread this path right i mean they they have been given this opportunity these billions of people <laughs> But if you look at the percentage of people who actually tread this path of uh, attaining Lord Paramatma, it's very, very, very small percentage of people. So is the human birth set up for failure uh, just because of all the desires and you know, textual expression and then all the other, uh, you know, ichas that are out there that people would want to acquire? And... Good question. Now, uh, the question here is: Correct me if I'm wrong. The question here is: Is human birth set up for failure? because we typically don't see too many people you know on this path and therefore very few people end up you know getting moksha and most rest are caught in this samsaric cycle is that the question the answer would be when you say a fraction what is that fraction what divided by what so that's first second this is kali yuga so we are fag end of this cycle of yugas of course another 4 lakh years to go that's the, you know but still considering the time time you know time scale okay, when we consider the time scale what the view that we have is not even a speck of dust so therefore to say that human birth is set up for failure Would not be correct. In fact, human birth is set up for success. If we really look around, uh, you know, our shastras say there are sixty-four thousand million species, something like that, a big number, of which human being is one species. Now, the power of making choices is only given to humans. no other living species has this power which means this is an advanced stage of getting closer to our destination it's a very advanced stage so therefore it is right that many do not recognize this and it takes a time krishna himself said anushyanam sahasreshu kaschit yatati siddhay so yes it is right but considering the time scale of creation and what we are you know comparing with this is insignificant so for all of us here is the message should be that that is why i made that statement that recognizing that we are spiritual beings on a human journey so this is just a human journey and it is up to us to end this journey as fast as we can and definitely the lord is so very compassionate that only to the humans you know the vedas and the upanishads and the scriptures all the scriptures are accessible so to nobody else so he has given all this only for the sake of making us successful in this game of life so definitely human life is set up for success and nothing else